Hey everybody, this is a scenario analysis of Hamlet's Demise, and I have not played ASL in a while, so this should go swimmingly. Yeah, probably not. Welcome to the Academy. This first part of this Let's Play series is going to be going over the scenario and the setup of the order of battles on the map and the plans of attack and defense. So let's run through this scenario real quick here. Designed by Kurt Schilling, one of the uh, multi-man publishing men there from the beginning and ex-professional baseball player. And um, I picked this scenario because of my viewing area here. I have to have one, a fairly small scenario so you can see the action and I can capture everything. I don't think uh, I could do a scenario justice um, by putting it on video and having a huge scenario all spread out and either being zoomed out and having, you know, tiny little counters that you're squinting at on the screen or having to zoom in occasionally so you can see the action, which makes it a lot of work for me. So. I picked this because it is a small scenario, easily to, easy to manage on my video setup here. Uh, yeah, so one board, basically half a board with one overlay, six turns, uh, German, French, early war, 1940. Um, and the special rules, there aren't that many um, ECs. Let me scoot this up so you can see it. Uh, ECs are moderate with a mild breeze from the west at start. Well, I should mention this uh, scenario is from one of the ASL annuals. I don't recall off, offhand which it is. Maybe I'll put a note here um, to indicate which uh, ASL annual it is from. But it is, it is A114. Um, and, and this is an errata here. It says from the west to start, which based on the scenario set up in the north direction, and the hexes, hex orientation is impossible. So there is an errata. The wind is actually for a mild breeze from the southwest at start. Uh, place overlay X18 as shown here. Um, and the uh, open ground is at level negative one. So here's the overlay. This lighter green is darker green. This is all at level minus one, this darker green, including the overlay. Okay. Uh, building U4 is a two-story house. That is this building here. It is a two-story house with um, stairways implied or uh, actually denoted stairways there with the uh, white X white square. Bore siding is NA, meaning the French are the defenders here. French are the defenders, they set up first. And the Germans move on board and they are fully off board, off this edge at the beginning. So normally the French would be able to uh, set up using bore siding for any of their ordnance, but there's the SSR saying bore siding is NA. So the French will not be able to bore sight a couple of hexes. Then lastly, all German A38s and their equivalent half, their half squads are considered assault engineers. And what this means is essentially their smoke exponent is too higher. So this A38 uh, engineering squad is an assault engineer with a smoke exponent of five, which is nice, but there's only one of them. Okay, so that's the SSRs. Let's look at the order of battles real quick between the French and the Germans. French have ELR2, bad. I hate low ELR scenarios because you're going to have troop quality problems from the get-go with an ELR that low, most likely. Santa 4, not too bad. We may see some French uh, sniper activity in this one. We have six first-line squads, one crew to man the 25 millimeter anti-tank gun, two 80 liters, a medium machine gun, a light machine gun, 
uh, light tank. It's a H38 or 39. It's kind of hard to read. I have it jotted down over here. It is an H39 with a 37 millimeter short barrel and a funky uh, coax machine gun that can be taken off and mounted as an anti-aircraft machine gun, but it can only be fired through the turret cover arc, something like that. Uh, I'll have to review that chapter H notes. I skimmed through them real quick. And then the 25 millimeter uh, long barrel anti-tank gun. Pretty decent uh, for this stage of the war, 1940. Armor piercing only, rate of fire of three, but it's less than 40 millimeter in uh, caliber, so it has a chance of potentially getting uh, multiple hits. So with a high rate of fire and a chance of multiple hits, which means you get basically two, two, two kill rolls, uh, this could be a decent weapon actually for the French, as long as they set it up in a place that can take advantage of hopefully knocking out uh, these three tanks. Okay, for the Germans, we have, again, this, the assault engineer, smoke exponent of five, two first-line squads, six second-line squads, uh, I should mention ELR-3, a little bit better than the French. Sand of 3, a little bit worse than the French. Uh, again, six second, li second line squads, a 9 minus 1 leader, very good. Two 8 -oh leaders, so they have the better upper hand in leadership, as you'd expect. Two light machine guns, two anti-tank rifles, which honestly I don't see much happening with them because the basic two kill number is a 5. Shooting against this tank which has an armor of four, but a turret armor of six. Uh, the chance of getting a hit, hit or a kill, even shooting from behind, getting the plus one bonus, is next to nothing, very, <laughs> very slim. You might get a be able to do a deliberate immobilization because the two kill number is greater than the lowest armor factor, five versus a four. So you might be able to get a deliberate immobilization with an anti-tank rifle, but I don't see these really coming into play at all in this scenario. Uh, if someone has ideas, a good way to use these, let me know. Flamethrower, getting in close, is going to be a nightmare if they get in close with the French. And you can see this hamlet here is pretty close, even shooting across streets, uh, firing it at range 2 at half firepower. I mean, that's still going to be a 12 with no train effect modifier, 12 even shots across streets, and everything's close in here. It's going to be a down and dirty fight. Uh, and then we have three light tanks. I think that's a Panzer 3F, a Panzer 2F, and a Panzer 1F. A 37L, decent, pretty decent gun for this time. 20L with infantry fire equivalent of 4. Both of these have breakdowns of 11, though, but rates, rates of fire of 2. Uh, this one has decent armor. This one, okay armor for the time. And then this has a coax for the uh, main armament. Not very good armor. Um, this could be taken out fairly easily, probably with either of these uh, French uh, vehicle and anti-tank gun. Now lastly, let's look at the uh, victory conditions. So the Germans win at the end of any player turn if they amassed greater than 16 casualty victory points, provided the French have not amassed greater than or equal to 20. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go through the MET-TC process of using uh, military doctrine in your ASL scenarios. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up here to the upper right, and you can skim through or watch that video or watch the parts that interest you. But I'm going to step through each part of that MET-TC acronym to evaluate uh, this scenario from using mili military doctrine. Let me put up what that stands for right over here to the right. And let's step through. So M stands for mission. And in ASL terms, if you've watched my previous video, that's essentially the victory conditions. So let's go over this in a little more detail. So the Germans win at the end of any player turn if they've amassed greater than 16 greater than or equal to 16 casualty victory points. The game doesn't end at the end of a game turn or the end of turn six. It ends at the end of any player turn if the Germans have greater than or equal to 16 casualty victory points. So that could be at the end of a French turn or a German turn. And depending on which turn it may end on, 
that may not give the French a turn, a turn to retaliate to cat potentially amass 20 victory points. And that's the second critical part of this. So the Germans win if they get greater than or equal to 16, provided the French basically have not killed too many Germans, greater than or equal 20 casualty victory points. So the tactics could be for the French, they could take two stances. One, try to punch the Germans in the face. Most likely these AFVs. Each of these, I believe, are five casualty victory points. Uh, one uh, vehicle, so one for vehicle, two functioning main armament, assuming they have a functioning main armament. Uh, another point because they have armor, for every five armor factors, for the lowest, I believe, armor factor, um, fractures rounded up, you get another point. So that's three. These all have lo low armor. So you divide each of these by five and you have less than one, but you round up the one. And then two more points for the crew. So each of these tanks are worth five victory points. You take out these three tanks, you're three quarters of the way to your 20 victory points. And then all you need to do is maybe take out a couple squads at that point for the French. The other tactic the French could use is uh, hide, right? Keep the Germans from getting their 16 victory points. So have set up uh, defensive lines and fall back and continue to fall back. They have the terrain. There's a lot of stone buildings here. And just keep falling back until the Germans aren't able to capture the victory points, covering, you know, lines of fire to keep the Germans from approaching too quickly. Uh, I don't know which method I'm going to use uh, as the French. Uh, the Germans, on the other hand, basically have to kill things to win. They have no choice. They can't just sit back and, and hover the rest. They have to be on the attack the entire time. But they can't be too rash with the use of their vehicles. Because if the, if the French are very wily with these two, they can easily, not easily, take out this. There's five points. Pretty fairly take out this one. Maybe with a little work, take out this one. If this anti-tank gun gets on a roll, gets on fire, uh, these could be in, in, in a dire, hurt, dire world of trouble here. Depending on where this thing sets up. Uh, but the, the Germans are going to have to be on the attack to get those 16 victory points in six turns. So 16 victory points, how many do the French have? They have, let's see, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, plus another 5, that 21, uh, 22, 23. I think they have 23 victory points. I think, the, I think a gun is worth two, if I recall. So... The Germans are going to have to eliminate the vast majority, kill the vast majority of the uh, the French. It doesn't mean broken. These could all be broken and, and the Germans will still lose. They outright have to eliminate however that is. KIAs, close combat, failure to route, what, what have you. They have to eliminate most of the, the French force and while not losing... Uh, 20 of their victory points, 15 of which are wrapped up again in these AFVs. So that's the that's the mission there. Enemy. I guess we kind of looked at, evaluated the enemy, enemy, but let's look at it a little closer. Let me remove the Met TC graphic here and show you these these kill numbers here. So the French two kill numbers for their ordnance are in blue, the two kill, basic two kill numbers for the Germans are in black here, including the uh, anti-tank rifle. Let's compare that against the armor on this uh, H-39. I'll remember, 39, yes. That has an armor, uh, four, four on the front, four on the side and rear. Both facings have, because there's a square box, has superior uh, turret armor. So. If it gets a hit, if it's hit anywhere, front, side, or rear, it actually has an armor factor of six. So let's compare that against the two kill numbers here. Nine, six, five. If I hit it with the 20L, not using fire the IFE, if I use the actual 20L, um, I'm not going to get a kill. And if I hit it with an anti-tank rifle, I'm not going to get squat. Right? If I hit it with the 37L, 
I'd have to roll, barring any other modifications like a range and whatnot, I would have to roll a three to either get a, depending on if I hit it, upper structure or lower structure, turret or hull, I would have to roll a three to get a possible shock or a uh, immobilization. If I rolled a two, I'd need a two to get a kill if I hit this thing in the upper structure. So this thing, if you play it right as a French, is fairly safe from these. Even if it, even if it hits a hull hit in Armor Factors 4, I'd need a, with my best German weapon, 37L, if it hits the lower structure, so it has an Armor Factor of 4, 9 minus 4 is a 5. I hit a 5, I'd get a mobilization. So I need a 4 or less to get a kill if I hit this thing, which is a small target, I believe. Can't see it here, but I think it's a small target. So this thing is fairly safe um, for the French. I can roll this around. It doesn't matter if it's front or rear face. It's the same armor, right? I can roll this around, just making sure I don't get in too bad of a situation. I can definitely go after these two and maybe be cautious about this, this one here. I can't do a lot about the squads. They have a little bit of range on me, at least these two. The assault engineer, I'm mainly worried about him uh, being able to easily play smoke. And maybe get into close combat with one, even two squads. He's got eight fire eight firepower. Uh, he also has uh, spraying fire and assault fire. So this, I'm kind of worried about this guy. The smoke capability. Um, it's got an underland morale as well. Um, anti tank rifle. I am not worried at all about the anti. I don't even care about those as a French, to be honest. <clears throat> not even worried about deliberate immobilization because I think it's plus five to hit. Plus one for it's plus six to hit. You're not going to get a hit. Plus you have to be within six hexes, which isn't a out of the realm of possibility. This is going to be a close, uh, close in fight. So, but I'm still not worried about that flamethrower. I'm extremely worried about this thing. I the only thing I can do for that is to stay out of its range, skulk, uh, fire at it, and hope. Uh, because there's a minus one modifier for a flamethrower on the hex and hope I get a result and can break the assault engineer, which is probably going to be carrying it, will will be carrying it. A uh, little worried about that. Not worried about these two too much. A little worried about him. Um, but uh, if I can play this guy, be creative with him, low risk, I'm going to try to take, I think I'm going to try to take out these because that's 15 victory points, like I said before. Morale levels are essentially the same other than this guy. Uh, a little bit le better leadership. Support weapons are about the same. So the only things that worry me are this guy with the flamethrower, maybe even probably stacked with a 9 minus 1, and maybe this guy um, playing as the French looking at my enemy here. Next up, uh, terrain. What do we have for terrain? So it's part of the map process, which I'll put back up here. They're coming in. The Germans are coming in, entering on this side of the board. Uh, most likely they're going to be entering on these this negative one level, unless they come in over here and then dip down. But most of the board's on this negative one. There's a lot of cover here. Uh, Lots of wood buildings, stone buildings. Everything here is basically a level one except this guy, but it's kind of in the back, uh, out of the way for blocking line of sight. The French are going to have to use some... I'm going to have to look closer at this before my setup, and I'll, call, I'll talk about that. Once I have my setup, I'll talk about um, why I set up the things I did, where they are. But the French are going to have to get creative with their line of sight, especially for the uh, anti-tank gun being able to get as many shot opportunities on the German AFBs as I possibly can to take them out. The Germans have pretty good cover coming in. I don't know how I'm going to bring them in, but they got woods. The trickier parts are going to be, you know, getting across this area. They have hindrances. They could come up through here. Um, they could even come in through the woods and dip down through here. But uh, they're going to have to, they're going to have trouble not necessarily trouble, but they need to be cautious coming across here, coming across here, especially if the French kind of hang out in this core area, even coming across here, watching their uh, lanes of fire. 
to get into this central area. Troops. Let's put the scenario back up. So that's when you look at your own units. And I've kind of already gone through this a little bit. Um, I have a medium machine gun, which is nice. And it does not have a breakdown of 11. It's, and it's got a rate of fire too. Range of 11, so it shouldn't be a, too much of a factor in this scenario. It should be able to shoot across most of the playing area. Um, I need to focus on effectively, in my opinion, effectively using, placing this guy, hoping for rate of fire <laughs> and multiple hits, positioning and moving this guy to take out these five victory points each, and using this guy to cover as many fields of fire as possible. Um, these squads probably best use for delaying or funneling the Germans to the areas where I want them to go so I can take shots at them. Uh, other than that, I, the French uh, don't have a whole lot to work with. Time. This scenario, because it is small, isn't the greatest uh, one to talk about, I guess, time in a scenario. The way I look at time, which is different than the the time in the military doctrine, which is which is about planning and getting your men ready and equipping and logistics and things like that. Time for me is, in ASL terms, is I have six turns with these victory conditions. In this case, there's no exit victory conditions. The Germans have to come in and eliminate uh, 16, at least 16 casualty victory points um, worth of French units. So the French could be anywhere on here. They could be running around. They could be retreating. The playable area is actually this hex row K. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's 13 hexes across. I have six turns. Time in this scenario really isn't going to be an issue as far as how far I need to move to accomplish a, a victory condition. It's going to be more of a, how many uh, French units have I eliminated each turn or how many French units have I eliminated by turn three, the halfway point, right? I need to, I can't wait till the last turn to eliminate 16 victory points. I need to be a trading, I would say at least from turn two. Turn two, I should be starting, the Germans should be starting to, probably put the French on their heels and having them retreat. By turn three and four, I should be eliminating uh, French either by, again, KIAs, which is unlikely with the cover we have here, stone buildings, wood buildings, close combat, which is a possibility, flamethrower, which is highly likely unless the French are able to take it out. But time is not a huge consideration in this scenario. We just need to make sure we're attriting French units uh, as the Germans and the French need to hold on for dear life for six turns or go on a rampage and kill as many Germans as possible, hoping that basically the forces wipe out each other and deny the Germans their victory conditions. Let's talk about the French setup here. Before, before I do that, I want to talk about this building here, uh, U4V3. The special scenario rule says it is a two-story house. Um, normally it would be, because it has the stairwell symbols, it would actually be a multi-story building, which would give it actually a second level, a ground level, first level, and second level. But because by SSR it says it's a two-story house, B23.22, um, this is actually what it looks like. From a cutaway, if you if I did a cutaway like that, in U4, there's a ground floor and a first floor, first level, V3, ground floor, first level. And the only way to go between them is to go from uh, first floor, first level on U4 into the ground level of V3, which intuitively makes sense. So uh, the French could go into this building, ground floor, go up the stair, go straight over without paying, uh, having to go up a hill, but going straight over from first floor to ground level of the next hex, and then they could theoretically go up that stairwell, up this stairwell, up into the first floor. So it's a stepped building in that hex. A little bit weird. Um, like I said, it would, would be a, have 
three locations normally, but uh, it's only a two location building in this sense. I think they did that to restrict the line of sight from being up here and being able to see over a bunch of this stuff. All of this is level one. And being on a level one here, you're not going to be able to, there's going to be blind spots behind all of this stuff. Okay. Um, let me talk about this tank real quick, this light tank, the H39. It has a one-man turret, which presents its own problem problems, and I'll talk about those in, in more detail if they should arise. But essentially, you cannot fire the main armament or or the coax machine gun if you are crew exposed. The other thing to note on this uh, vehicle is uh, it only has AP-10. Um, it has HE, 37 millimeter AP, which, or sorry, HE, which I think the two kill number on HE is four. So it's not going to get a whole lot done if I run out of AP. So it only has AP of 10. So there's potential this could run out of ammo. And it's radialist, but it's alone. So that's not even going to come into play. You starter kit guys, you don't have to worry about it. Even us full, full ASL guys don't have to really worry about it because he is by his lonesome, so he doesn't have to uh, use platoon movement by his lonesome. Okay, let's talk about setup here for the French. Uh, I debated in the first part of the video whether I should try to duke it out with the Germans and try to inflict uh casualty victory points on them or if I if I should take up a strategy of a line of defense and kind of skulk and make them come to me and just kind of stay out of their range but delay them as long as possible and hope that six turns runs out and I think that's what I'm going to do I'm going to play the the cautious game here uh, if I set too far forward I can I can set up anywhere between Extra is K and W. Uh, the Germans are going to come on over here, entering on a uh, Hextro K. But I'm afraid if I set too far forward, uh, the Germans are going to, one, overrun me, two, break me and force me to route, and three, potentially, let me get a marker here, potentially very quickly come in like something like this and or like this and if they break anything that's maybe in here forcing me to route well they're going to have interdiction lanes they could even have interdiction lanes from you know here here if i have to route you know anywhere across these streets to get back as the french so i don't want to get encircled by the germans um, easy to do with their with their uh, afvs as well they could come in and just cover uh, interdiction lanes for me retreating, which could cause massive problems if I break too far forward. Okay, let me erase this. So my plan for the French is to take advantage of this stone building here. Here, I have my medium machine gun set up a squad there. He's able to cover basically anything that comes in through here, as well as anything that tries to cross through here, even come up through these woods here. No real line of sight back here, that's okay. Same with the light machine gun here, he can cover you know, these, this type of fire lane, anything that comes in to these hexes, I can form a fire group. The only problem with that is if this uh, squad happens to break, they're gonna have to leave the medium machine gun behind. I'm hoping I can back out before that happens. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Just in case I have this unit here that could maybe advance in and grab it and then back out if this squad happens to break because I'm sure that they'll be targeted and if they break, they'll have to leave that there. This guy is just cover a flank in case something comes up through here. The same thing here. This is basically a uh, rally point. And I have to be careful with these uh, the uh, row houses because you have to leave the building to go from one hex to the other. So if I'm routing, uh, you have to use bypass. You can't, it's not called bypass, but you have to pay the bypass movement point to basically go around. So it would cost to go from here to here if I had to route, it would cost three 
to go around like this and I could be shot at at this vertex or this vertex if I happen to go out and around like this because there's a wall there. So I have to be careful how I use these buildings, how I route back to them if I have to, and even if I have to move around them because I can be shot at as I move out and around. Um, these units here, this leader and this squad are basically reactionary. They can shift to the south or the north depending on what happens. And I set up my H-39 and the anti-tank gun in the rear um, to cover uh, AFVs getting behind me and either forcing failure to route um, or interdicting, that kind of thing. So if the Germans, and this is a problem with playing solo, I know what I'm going to do as a French and vice versa. I could have gone, could have gotten elaborate and done some randomization and said, okay, the gun is going to set up in these potential four hexes. And as units move, if they get in the line of sight of one of those four hexes, I roll to see if it's in that hex. If it's not, then it's in one of the other three hexes. And But I didn't want to do that. This is where I want to set it up. This is probably where a lot of people set it up. Don't want to set it up too far forward. It can easily get overrun. Um, so I'm setting up back here. It can cover down here. It can cover any vehicle coming over this hill because I have a line of sight to that, even over this building. If any vehicle tries to come around, I have a line of sight if it come over the hill down the road. Same with this vehicle. He has a line of sight down here. So I'm keeping uh, the German vehicles from coming in behind me. And uh, like I said early on, this H39 is fairly impervious to the German uh, AFVs. So I might move him around and depending on what the Germans do with their tanks, try to take out one, two, or maybe all three of them if I get lucky. This guy's obviously going to be hidden. I know where it's going to be. I'll have the mark, the hex marked. So I'll remember. And um, yeah, that's about it. So yeah, lanes of fire for the anti-tank gun like this. For the AFB like that. These guys will all be concealed when the game starts because the Germans are coming off from off board. And my plan for the French is going to be basically fall back, skulk, fall back, route if I break, fall back. And my stronghold is going to be this, which is right here. Hopefully with my anti-tank gun still maybe hidden by the time the Germans get there to cover the streets. And if the Germans try to come, come across in these hexes or these hexes, uh, they're going to be facing a point blank shot. Even though it's a 25 LL point blank shot, I might be able to get a result if these guys are still hidden or still kicking at the time. And I don't know what's going to happen with this tank. So that's my plan. Stay concealed as long as possible. Fall back slowly. Force the Germans to come up and fight me uh, here in this stone building with multiple levels. Being careful not to trap myself in the upper floors, especially this upper floor. Once they get up there and the Germans happen to get into this level here, then I'm basically trapped at that point. Okay. Next, I'll do the uh, Germans and their plan of attack and how they're going to come on the board over here. German setup time. First little update. I moved this, uh, the French H-39 from, I think he was in this hex, over to here. Just trying something a little different from my initial setup. Everything else is the same. Just decided to move him here on top of the hill. <clears throat> He's still buttoned up, has to be buttoned up, one-man turret. Vehicle covered arc is facing this way, turreted this way, so... I can easily reposition him back over here if I need to or want to just by taking off that way. So one quick change to the uh, French setup. Okay, let me erase this and I'll go over the German setup. Okay, I have my Germans set up approximately where they're going to come on on the board. They're actually on the K uh, hex row. They're going to be set up just off camera view. I just wanted to get them in the camera view to show them a pro show you pro approximately where they're going to come on. My plan, well, one thing to note, the date is May, yeah, May 13th. Orchards 
are in effect. There's a few orchards here that might come into play. These probably will not. And grain is out of season, but they are plowed fields. So um, hindrances are not in effect for grain, but the movement penalty is in effect. So one and a half per hex, just no hindrance um, for plowed fields. So that's kind of important because there's going to be no cover coming this way through same level fire. No hindrances coming through any of these. It's just going to cost more. So I was going to think of maybe bringing some Germans up this way somehow. And I nixed that idea because this is all going to be open ground here. So what I'm going to do with the Germans is basically uh, bring all my infantry in as you see here and create a front through this area. And perhaps these guys up top might try to do a flanking move, something like that. And then my tanks are going to, I thought about doing uh, bypass Lee's Freeze um, for you starter kit players. You don't have to worry about that. If I do it, which I don't think I'm going to do, uh, you'll see how it works. And the reason I don't think I'm going to do it is... One, to get there, I'm going to have to, this French tank where I repositioned it, he's got field of fire down onto this road. Uh, he might be able to see this hex, but he can definitely see probably these hexes here, the French tank, right? And definitely, you know, everything in here. Uh, he can even see all the way across, and he can see all these, all these hill hexes up here. Straight across, straight across this little negative one valley, valley kind of. Uh, so to bring these tanks in early, and first, bring them on first to do get uh, vehicle bypass freeze on any of these units. They would have to come in first. They'd have to get in, drive into these hexes, one or more, using uh, bypass movement. It's going to put them in the line of sight of this tank which could easily take this tank out. In addition, um, it's going to put them in basically point blank with these medium machine gun or machine guns, medium and light machine gun. And, you know, point blank shots, probably going to get a hit. Might even get a deliberate immobilization, might even kill something like this. The two kill number is a uh, four, I think, for a machine gun. Yeah. Um, and then you might have a bonus for range, range of zero, um, whatever that bonus is. I don't remember offhand. Maybe it's a plus one or plus two to the two kill number. So it puts things like this in jeopardy, this potentially in jeopardy, depending on that which side you shoot it on, front side or rear. So I don't, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do vehicle bypass movement. Um, another reason is. If I bring a tank in uh, like this or in like this, um, and these units are still in good order, good order, they can do street fighting because there'll be buildings on either side as a tank drives by. And basically during the movement phase, the German movement phase, uh, these infantry can, not this one because he's not in a building, but this guy could jump into this hex as the uh, AFV entered and attempt close combat. And if it's unsuccessful, he just gets to jump back. If it's successful, boom, AFV destroyed, potentially immobilized. So I'm a little leery about doing vehicle, vehicle bypass movement with the medium machine gun, light machine gun, and the houses here, and the potential for street fighting, uh, close combat reaction fire during the German movement phase. Again, starter kit, there is no street fighting, uh, close combat reaction fire, so you don't have to worry about that. So that's, my, that's sort of my plan. Where I'm going to bring in these AFVs is a good question. Uh, I may just bring them in into line of sight so I can at least get some shots on some of this infantry, especially the infantry in the woods here. Um, 
they're going to be concealed. So we're potentially concealed when these fire fire back at them. It depends on if I fire as things move on. They may or may not be concealed, but I may just bring these guys on and take shots at uh, the guys in the woods. Me, I think one of these might have a smoke discharger. Yeah, this guy has a smoke discharger I could use potentially for cover. Oh, so does he. How about this guy? Panzer 2F. Yeah, they all have smoke dischargers, which is an important note. I mentioned this in a video a couple back about, I think it was in the, in the Met uh, video, Met TC. Look at your, make sure you understand the special scenario rules. Anytime a scenario mentions that wind is in effect or some sort of wind level, that should be a key that there's something in the order of battle that you can use one side or the other, or that you have to watch out for one side or the other. So the wind direction is uh, from the southeast. So the wind direction is like this. And what that's going to do is cause drift. And for a uh, smoke discharger, that's going to produce, uh, I think smoke dischargers produce a plus two smoke. So that's going to create a... Uh, one hex of drift, one extra drift. So if I pop smoke, if I dump smoke here, smoke discharge there, I think it's in the next advancing fire, smoke would drift to here. And it would be, I'll have to double check the, double check the rules on, on uh, smoke drift. But uh, that's, and the, the how many is uh, hexes are the drift is and what the level of smoke is. Um, I believe it's going to drift one. I'll double check, but all of these tanks have smoke dischargers, and there is wind in this direction, basically into the teeth of the French. So to get cover for my German units, I might want to consider bringing these guys in and popping smoke somewhere um, in here so I can get across the street potentially later. Okay, that's one thing I just remembered. Keep an eye out for smoke and wind and drift. And if I do it, I'll get into the rules then. I'll double check it. I haven't done it for a while. And uh, that's pretty much it for the German setup. That's pretty much it for the scenario analysis for Hamlet's Demise. The next video will be turn one. We'll start with everything will be concealed. I'll place the sniper counters. Um, I Kind of, you kind of saw it earlier in the video. I had the French sniper counter here, but I'll I'll place those before we start, and we'll do turn one in the next video. It should be a quick turn. It's probably going to be these guys moving on. Little to no defensive fire, depending on if I can see anything or if I want to fire, because these will all be concealed. And uh, we'll kick off turn one in the next video, uh, whenever that is, whenever I get to it. All right. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you made it this far. If you did make it this far, post in the comments and say, I watched the whole thing. All right, I'll see you in the next video.